Welcome to CC, the classic car show. In this episode, we discover a British midget with a mighty following and get the real deal on classic 911s in our buyer's guide to Porsche. We go automotive treasure hunting and blow the dust off some classics as we talk about the coveted barn find. Also on the show, how well do you know your chrome? We'll put you to the test. We'll look at a car of today that may well turn out to be a classic of tomorrow and try to get to grips with a couple of American beauties with a very big road presence. So sit back and get ready to cruise into the long open road that is CC Classic Cars. evoke the kinds of emotions that this classic British roadster induces with its nod to the early beginnings of open top motoring. And it could be considered an accident that this beautiful MGTC, also known as the MGTC Midget, is even in the category of classic cars. The MG story started in 1928 with the release of its first vehicle, the M-Type or Midget, and it was an immediate success. It was produced and refined for nearly 10 years before the first MGT, the TA, was released in 1936. Well in a vintage class and not even close to the classic era. It was closely followed in 1939 by the TB. The T-Series MGs of the time were also available as a luxury four-seater in several body styles the WA Sports Saloon, the Charlesworth Tourer, and a very exclusive Tickford Drophead Coupe. Just over 300 of these cars were built over a 12-month period. By the time the TC arrived, the luxury lines were dropped from production. Like most car manufacturers of the time, the war put the brakes on any new car models. And the post-war industry was simply a matter of dusting off old designs and going back into production. This was exactly what the MG Car Company did, starting production of the MGTC in September 1945, with very minor changes from the original TA and TB models. TC was a pre-war car in a post-war market and management at MG didn't have any high hopes for its success but forged ahead anyway while they worked on designs for future models. Surprisingly, the MG TC was a hit with car buyers. While the USA was producing large and quite comfortable rides with loads of power, the MG TC was a loud small engine fun machine and was considered a real driver's car. This reputation led to the TC being the most successful car to come out of the MG plant since its inception in 1928. Exactly 10,000 production versions of the MG TC were produced from September 1945 to November 1949, a larger number than any previous MG model. It cost £527 on the home market in 1947, which would be about £21,000 in today's currency or about 33,000 US dollars. Many of the TCs were exported from the UK to the USA, even though it was never built in a left-hand drive configuration. The version of the TC exported to the USA did have some minor differences. The headlights were slightly smaller and were a sealed beam variety to meet US safety regulations. The twin rear lights were larger for the same reason. The US also demanded turn signals or indicators for local registration. To top it off, the US TCs also featured chrome bumpers as standard. This particular MGTC is a fantastic example of a beautifully kept vehicle. 
The styling is unmistakable with the classic wire wheels, synonymous with MGs, featuring the propeller style knockoff, emblazoned with the MG logo. The organic lines of the rolling fenders that sweep right back to create running boards are in stark contrast to the angular, rigid structural design of the front end and the classic tall grille. Rounded chrome external headlights really accentuate the initial design era of the vehicle. Later models had these incorporated into the fenders for a more modern look. Driver comforts are at a minimum in the MGTC. A cockpit-style driver positioned in front of a very retro spoke steering wheel set the tone for a plain but functional interior. Classic instrumentation spread right across the dashboard, a flat windscreen and suicide doors are all hallmarks of a time long gone. Under the hood, the MGTC was no muscle car, using the same power plant as the Morris 10. This was the XPAG engine first released in the late 1930s. Featuring four cylinders at 1,250cc's, with overhead valves, it produced a modest 54.5 horsepower at 5,200 RPMs. It was a reliable workhorse though, and had enough juice to keep the driver in that low cockpit flying around the corners. For a classic roadster like this, the hood or rag top is really just for rainy days and rumour has it, if you are caught out for a drive in the sun with the roof up, you will get a ribbing from any fellow MGT drivers. And so you should. MGT stayed in production until 1955. Over 56,000 cars and 21 years later it was replaced by the MGA. Not bad for a midget. Here's a challenge for all you classic car fans. Know Your Chrome gives you a peek at some close-ups of classic chrome. Look at the shapes. Do you recognise the lines? Can you tell which car sports this shiny styling? It's too early for clues. But we can tell you it's a car, it's a classic, and it's very, very cool. Look closely, and we'll give you more hints later in the show. Next on CC, the classic car show. An exciting way to land yourself a classic car. A great jag of tomorrow, and our buyer's guide to Porsche. hunting for a classic car, there are a few ways to go. Classics are categorised into three classifications that describe the condition of the vehicle. There's original cars, restore cars and barn finds. Original cars are vehicles that have been driven over their lifetime and are still likely to be on the road today. They have not been resprayed or restored and can sometimes have non-factory modifications made to them over time. The classic version is the little old lady who drove it to church on Sundays. Restore cars are exactly that. Cars that have been meticulously restored to their former glory. Often bare metal restorations with everything in its place. These vehicles are generally pretty expensive, but are real head turners. There is, however, a much more exciting way to land yourself a classic car. Much like hunting for treasure, you can keep an eye out when traveling in the country for the elusive barn find. But what is a barn find? A barn find is generally exactly that. It's something that's found in a property or an old barn. Uh, its condition may be good, but in most cases it's generally pretty poor because it's been used and in many cases abused. You have to remember these cars have probably gone through many hands before they've finally ended their days sitting in a barn. The barn find can be an exciting experience. It's not unusual to discover more than one car in a large barn, and sometimes they are in excellent condition. More often than not though, the barn finds are a whole lot of hard work. 
the general state of a barn find can be not too bad if it's been kept or at least preserved to some extent by sitting in the barn. However, in many cases, it may mean that there have been rats inside the car and they've eaten the upholstery, they've laid nests in the upholstery. In some cases, other wild animals have uh, got into the car or in some cases, people have taken the doors off and allowed the car to be used as a sort of chook shed or something. So the interior of the car can be in a really, really important condition. The exterior of the car might not be too bad, but then again, if it's had years of rust, etc., then it's decayed quite a bit. So it all sounds like a lot of hard work. Surely it would be better to get hold of a running classic and restore it from there. Well, not always. The advantage of finding a barn find is in many cases you will get an unmolested car, hopefully, in which case it has all its what's known as jewellery, which is all the chrome work, etc., still with the vehicle. Obviously, the, the most desirable barn finds are those cars that are considered to be very desirable, like Bugattis or Rolls-Royce, etc. And in some cases, people do find them in barns. In some cases, people have opened a barn and literally found a car that is very, very desirable. Uh, in America, particularly, they have found what were known as concept cars, cars that were produced by car companies as a one-off, shown at a motor show, and then, in theory, they were scrapped, but in reality, they weren't. And uh, some people have had the luck of opening a barn and finding a concept car, which is unique. It's a one-off. We don't condone snooping around other people's property though. If you do spot a car that you would like a closer look at, you need to contact the property owner to organise a closer inspection, like we did with these beauties.